So I'm Robert Huang, and this is a joint work with Richard Kuhn and John Presco on predicting many properties of a quantum system from very few measurements. So the archive link is here, and it's just recently published on Nature Physics, actually just yesterday. The main motivation for this work is to understand how classical machine could perceive and understand, like, like sort of to perceive and look at quantum system. What we mean by that is the ability of converting the quantum system, some unknown quantum system, to uh, efficient classical representation, such that this classical representation allows you to accurately predict various different properties of the original unknown quantum system. So some of the key aspects for this task, it's similar to what uh, Giacomo has talked about, include sample complexity, which means like how many copies of your quantum system do you need to see in order to reconstruct this classical representation, as well as quantum resource, like uh, how difficult it is to perform the quantum measurements of your quantum system, and also classical storage and post-processing on predicting the properties. So the standard approach for this task is quantum state tomography, where you just learn the complete full representation of the quantum system given by an exponentially large matrix. So due to this, uh, essentially you wanted to construct this exponentially large matrix, even the simple optimal protocol requires a number of copies that scales exponential in system size. So you have to look at d square over epsilon square number of the quantum system in order to construct this full representation. And furthermore, all other properties are exponential. In order to circumvent this exponential scaling, there have been several reason approaches. So one very nice theoretical uh, result is called shadow tomography, where the key idea is to not learn the full representation, but just directly predict a large number of properties given as expectation values of observables. The best rigorous protocol is due to Aronson and Rusblum, where they showed that the number of copies you need to see is actually only n squared, quadratic in the system size, and polylogarithmic in the number of properties you wanted to predict. However, even though it's very uh, uh, cheap on the sample complexity side, um, it requires storing all the copies in a quantum memory and implementing an exponentially long quantum circuit. So this is actually not a very practical um, kind of proposal. Another very different line of research uh, is based on machine learning, where you just perform some simple quantum measurements and then by gathering the measurement data, you train a neural network to represent the quantum state. So the most recent, uh, one of the most recent approaches is POVM neural network tomography due to Juan Carlos Kula et al, where it only requires single qubit rotation plus computational basis measurements. Um, however, as similar to many machine learning approaches, many of the aspects like what kind of state it works and how, how easy it is to learn those states are sort of unknown. So in this work, um, we are hoping to combine these two reason approaches. And we pose the following question. Um, can we find a provably efficient procedure that first learn this classical representation of an unknown quantum state from very few measurements? And subsequently, this classical representation allows you to predict a large number of properties of the underlying unknown quantum state row. So the short answer for this question is yes, and it's given in this theorem in our paper we proved that there exists a procedure that guarantees the following. So this procedure would learn a classical representation of an unknown quantum state from only B log M over epsilon squared measurements. Subsequently, after learning this classical representation, you could give the procedure uh, M observables, any M observables O1 to OM with a norm bounded by B. Then this procedure could use this class representation to predict the expectation values of all these observables up to error epsilon. So what is, uh, what, is, what is the surprising part of this theorem? Let's consider the following example. Let's say we wanted to predict 10 to the 6 different observable, the expectation value of 10 to the 6 different observable. All of them have a norm bounded by 1. Naively, since we have m, like 10 to the 6 observables, if you wanted to get their expectation value, we have to measure each of them, and that would require 10 to the 6 over epsilon squared measurements. However, this theorem essentially tells us that um, from this n equal to b log m over epsilon squared, 
we actually only need six log 10 over epsilon squared measurements, which is a significant reduction from 10 to the six. So what this is essentially saying is that after you do all the measurements, naively, uh, if you just use the data you collected naively, um, then you require a much larger number of measurements. However, the truth is that you can actually combine these data you have in order to make a much more efficient uh, prediction. And furthermore, we don't need to know um, this observables O1 to OM in advance. So we could just create this class representation and then the observable come afterwards and it would work uh, nonetheless of what the observables are. So how does this procedure works? It's actually very simple and it's based on quantum scrambling. Um, so in the first step, what you would do is you would sample a random unitary UI from some ensemble. Um, so you use this unitary UI to rotate your quantum system. And after that, you just perform a computational basis measurement. So what this step is doing is actually when you apply this quantum scrambling on your quantum system, you sort of scramble all the information around. So for example, if you have an exponentially large density matrix, after applying this unitary, you actually scramble the information on the off-diagonal elements, there's exponential number of them, onto the diagonal elements, and so on. And after that, after you do the measurements, you simply store an efficient representation of the output state SI, given as UI dagger BI. How do you store that? Actually, you just store the description for UI as well as the output bit string. An intuitive view of this procedure can be seen from this figure shown below, where you could think of the quantum system as a very high dimensional object. And every time what you're doing is you're sort of rotating it in some way, and then you measure the diagonal part. So it's sort of equivalent to rotating this high dimensional object, projecting it onto a low dimensional uh, place and then, and then combining them afterwards to obtain a, a, a better picture of what this quantum system is. And due to this uh, mental picture, we call this the classical shadow of your quantum system. So after you have obtained this classical shadow, um, so actually you repeat this step for n times. So you will obtain an array of the states, S1 to Sn. What you would do next is, uh, so how would, how would you predict properties when you wanted to, let's say, estimate trace up all row for some observable O? So this is based on the following fact that we proved. Um, by using the information scrambling properties of the unitary U, you could show that there exists a CPTP map, so essentially a quantum channel given by this uh, M, such that the underlying quantum state is equal to the expectation value of M inverse applied on these classical shadows SI. So based on this fact, um, you can easily apply the following algorithm for estimating the expectation value. Um, this is also known as median of means estimation to make the prediction much more robust and to improve concentration. So what you would do is you would compute this XI and then you would average chunk of them and take the medium of, it, of everything. And that's your resulting prediction. So here are some illustrative examples of what kind of random unitary that you could do as well as what would the resulting observables that you could predict. So for example, let's say you apply a global quantum information scrambling. So that what I mean by that is you apply unitary that such that all the qubits interact with each other. So one important example is a random Clipper circuit where you essentially randomly select CNOT gates um, Hadamard gates and base gates, apply it onto your system, um, very similar to what the Google experiments was doing, and then you measure in the computational basis state. So this sort of uh, very arbitrary and kind of random and weird um, scrambling procedure actually allows you to predict an exponential number of fidelities, any fidelities of the quantum system from only a polynomial number of measurements. So yeah, what- five minutes. five minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so, so yeah, so the implication of this is that we can obtain the full information of any quantum system generated by a polynomial number of gates, essentially meaning that after you apply this random Clipper circuit rotation, do the measurements, you can obtain all the information of basically any physical states that you could create. 
Another important example is based on local quantum information scrambling, where you don't apply, you don't allow all the qubits to talk to each other, but you just apply a random shallow circuit so that it's locally scrambled. In that case, you could predict a large number of local observables. So this would be particularly useful for like variational algorithms such as VQE, variational quantum eigensolver, or variational quantum simulation, etc. So here is a summary of some of the theoretical results that we could show. So not only that, you could also predict things like entanglement entropy, entanglement witness, um, local Hamiltonian, etc. So this is not just a theoretical kind of um, finding. Um, we also saw that by applying this procedure in practice, it also works really well. So in this numerical section, we would showcase two examples. There are more in our paper. So the first one is for predicting two-point correlation functions. So um, that is, we consider the ground state for a 1D transfer field Ising model as well as 2D Heisenberg model. And we predict the two-point correlation function for, for different places. As you can see, um, the classical shadow given by this orange line, uh, orange circle, uh, as well as this shadow thing, um, they predict very well according to the true value. It's slightly better than the previous results on neural network quantum state tomography. Um, but the main advantage here for this predicting two-point correlation function is that this procedure is significantly faster than this previous uh, machine learning based approaches. As you can see from figure C, it's like 10 to the three times or 10 to the four times faster in the post-processing time. The main reason is due to the lack of, uh, is due to the absence of training a, time, uh, a very computationally intensive recurrent neural network for, uh, yeah, for, for the NQST. Another example, a very interesting one, is based on, is for applications in simulating one-dimensional quantum electrodynamics. So this is uh, built upon a paper last year on Nature, um, where they use a variational quantum simulation for finding eigenstates of lattice stringer model, which is essentially a lattice model for the 1D QED, what they would do is they would apply variational optimization for preparing the trial state of the fermionic field. So essentially, they would create some quantum state representing the fermionic field, and they try to minimize the Hamiltonian variance. It's because if you could, if the Hamiltonian variance is equal to zero, and and yeah, if it's equal to zero and the quantum state is pure, then this would be an eigenstate. So what we apply here is that after the creation of this trial state for a fermionic field, this quantum state, um, we apply our technique for constructing a classical representation of the quantum system. And then we use this classical representation to predict the Hamiltonian variance. The reason is that the Hamiltonian variance could be expanded to a sum of a large number of local observables, essentially unto the four of them. Uh, and, and yeah, and you could use classical representation to estimate those things. So you compare with the uh, very carefully designed handcrafted scheme in their original paper, where they fine tune the measurement scheme such that it fits very well for measuring this Hamiltonian variance in a lattice stringer model. And we see that uh, when a system size get large enough, we actually get a significant reduction of more than 10, 10 times reduction in the number of experiments that we need. So to conclude, um, we propose a rigorous and practically efficient procedure that allows classical machines to perceive quantum system. And this provides a theoretical foundation for some of the very remarkable behavior that we have seen in recent machine learning approaches. And furthermore, this insights also provide empirical advantage over some of the existing approaches. One of the key open questions that seemed very interesting to us is whether we could build upon this and obtain a rigorous understanding for using machine learning to solve quantum antibody problems. Thank you for listening.